Hi. Now, we've got the equations of the two curves, y equals a to the power x, y equals 4b to the power x, and we're given that a, b equals 2. And asked to show that at the point of intersection, then, of these two curves, the x-coordinate is given by x equaling 2, all divided by 2 log of a in base 2 minus 1. So, how do we do this one? Well, first of all, we know that at the point of intersection, we can equate the two y-coordinates. So let's just put an intro here. We'll just say at point of intersection. At point of intersection, we know that a to the power x must equal 4b to the power x. The y-coordinates are going to be exactly the same. And to solve an equation like this, where the unknown's x is a power, we need to take logs. We've got a clue what base to take logs in when we look at what we've got to show. It's got to be base 2. So if I take logs to both sides in base 2, we therefore got the log of a to the power x in base 2 is equal to the log in base 2 then of 4b to the power x. Now, for this one here, I can use the power rule for logs. Bring the x out to the front here. So, therefore, what we get is x times the log of a in base 2 is equal to. And for this one, don't make the mistake of bringing the x out to the front here. This is not all of 4b to the power x. It's only just b to the power x. So, what we've got to do here is use the rule where you've got a product of two things is the same as adding the logs of each one. In other words, this is the same as the log in base 2 of 4 plus the log in base 2 of b to the power x. We've got to go through that step first. Now, we can bring the power here out to the front by using the power rule. Okay? So, if we do that, we've got x log in base 2 of a equals... Now, this term here, this is an obvious one. The log of 4 in base 2. What power do we need to raise the base to in order to get 4? It's 2. Definition of a log, OK? So, therefore, this has to be 2. 2 to the power 2 gives us that 4. As for this one, we use the power rule here and bring the x out the front. So that's going to be x log of b in base 2. OK? Now we need to group together the terms that contain x. So what I'm going to do is take x log of b in base 2 from both sides. So we're going to have x log of a in base 2 minus x log of b in base 2. I'm going to pull out x as a common factor, though, at this stage. So we'll have x times the log in base 2 of a minus the log in base 2 of b. And that's going to equal the 2 there. So hopefully you can start to see this is starting to get to look like this. Only we've got a b in this at this stage. But uh, we can come to that in a moment. If I now divide both sides by the log of a minus the log of b, both in base 2, we're going to get x equals 2 then, all divided by the log in base 2 of a minus the log in base 2 of b. So if I just divide this off, OK, We'll call this equation 1. We're going to be coming back to that in a moment. So we've got to do something with this b here so that we can eliminate it from here and get it x in terms of a. Well, we get that from this result up here. We know that a times b is equal to 2. Let's just remind ourselves here, but ab equals 2. So if I was to take the log of both sides in base 2. OK, we'll have therefore the log of AB in base 2 must be equal to the log 
of 2 in base 2. Well, this is an obvious result. It's 1. The log of any number in its own base is 1. 2 to the power 1 gives us that 2. So this is 1. Okay, And we can use the addition rule here. That is that the log of AB in base 2 is exactly the same as the log of A in base 2 plus the log of B in base 2. And that's going to equal, as we said, 1 here. So I can now make negative log B in base 2 the subject. All I've got to do is just take this term from both sides. And I'm also going to rearrange it by taking 1 from both sides. So therefore, we're going to end up with the log of A in base 2 minus the 1 equals minus the log in base 2 of B. And if I, say, call this equation 2, and I now sub equation 2 into 1, then we're going to be nearly there. What we've got is therefore x equals 2 all over, and we've got log in base 2 of a, and for minus the log of 2 in b, you can see what we've got here is plus another log of a in base 2, and then minus 1. And can you see that we end up now with two lots of log of a in base 2 minus that one there, the result we had to show. Okay.